Good morning. It's Saturday and we're here in the kitchen. Hello, everyone. I'm so glad that you're here with me. And uh, we've got a lot of things planned. In fact, I was so busy over here. I've been over here massaging my cabbage because this week I think I'm going to fix some uh, uh, Reuben sandwiches. And rather than buying the sauerkraut, I'm going to make my own. And, you know, fermented food is so good for you. So I have one whole head of cabbage that I have uh, cut up and just sliced very thinly and just about little, little bite-sized pieces. You can see there. And I sprinkled a couple of tablespoons of salt in this container just a few minutes ago. And so then what I'm doing now is just squeezing and maneuvering the cabbage in this bowl because I want it to break down the sauerkraut just a little bit. And then we're gonna place it into a mason jar and we're gonna let it ferment for about, well, three to four days or until it has the flavor that we want. So I've got all of that. Now you can add caraway seeds into this. I didn't, I left it pure. And uh, if I decide to put them in later on, I can certainly do that, but I'm not gonna do that this morning. So this is gonna sit quietly while we're working today. We've got a lot to do. I hope you're having a, an amazing Saturday morning. I am. Um, I'm going to do a little bread baking today, and uh, also we're going to put together uh, some red beans and rice. So, if you like those kind of things, I hope you'll stay right here with us, and let's get over here and get that bread together so that we can um, get it into the oven. I have the oven heated already on. Uh, 400. Good morning. Good morning. And I'm sorry, you know, we're dealing with light. And of course, being morning, we've got light issues. Okay. So here we go. I need a little coffee. And I'm going to move this out of the way just for a moment. Now what I did, and I'm going to start you here. This is already done, this particular um, batch. Let's see if I can put you in a better place. I'm playing around trying to figure out where, what's the best direction so that um, you can see and I can see you. Okay, I think that might work. Now, we're going to, first of all, put together some bread. And if I remember last week, Michelle had talked about that she was doing some French bread. And, you know, it was funny this week. Um, we were thinking we were getting ready to make a sandwich. And unfortunately, the, we were out of bread. And that's because I hadn't made any bread. It had been such a crazy week, I didn't have time. So let me get that started. I, uh, I have my cup here, and I'm using bread flour today. Now that's not saying that you have to have bread flour. You can certainly do this with um, just regular flour, but I'm gonna measure out three cups of flour in just a moment. Now, in this cup, I'm gonna put in one and a half cups of water, and I'm gonna try to get it as Kind of like baby bottle water because I don't want it, I want it to, to be slightly warm, but not so warm that it will kill my meat. So, what I do is that I put it right here on the you know, how we used to test those baby bottles with the inside of our arms. Well, that's what I'm doing. I'm testing there. And if it feels a little too hot, then I know it is too hot. So I'm going to put in about a cup and a half. Okay. Wow. That was good. 
right on the nose. So we have a cup and a half of water that we're going to place in. One and a half cups. I'm going to put in, huh, I brought the sugar, I thought, over here. Where did I, ah, there it is, over on the table. Let me get the sugar. And uh, I have the sugar ready to go. I've got my yeast ready to go. All right, we're going to put in, do you have to have sugar? No but the yeast likes the sugar. So I'm gonna put in a couple of teaspoons of sugar, and this is pure cane sugar, and uh, give that a stir just to dissolve it. And that warm water will dissolve that pretty quickly. So we're gonna get that all dissolved. Okay, we're good to go there. All right, that's our sugar. You get another spoon. I'm going to add in a teaspoon of yeast. And the only reason I'm using a whole teaspoon is because the big guy likes something about yeast that he just likes. So I'm going to add in yeast. I've already checked it. And uh, this yeast is good till 2024. So I think we're in good shape. So uh, anyway, I'm going to uh, give all of this a good stir so our yeast can get happy in there. Give it a minute. And uh, how are you ladies and gentlemen doing this morning? You've got a new addition in your family? Oh, you've got a new baby. Oh, tell us about the new baby. Okay. She says um, he's moving. He's having some breathing issues, and he was moved to the NICU, but he's doing better. Oh, wonderful, wonderful, Michelle. That is amazing. We will keep him in our prayers, and uh, certainly we want those babies to be healthy. And, you know, even in spite of some of the issues that babies have at the very beginning, our technology and knowledge that doctors have is just so much better than what it used to be. So because of that, um, babies survive and they do what they need to do. So that's a good thing. Yay! Babies are wonderful. All right. We've got water, yeast, and a touch of sugar. Now we're going to start to add the uh, um, add the flour in, and I'm going to put in three cups of flour. Now, when you see this cup, you're going to go, it looks like a coffee cup. Yes, it is, but it measures exactly one cup. So that's one. I've had this little cup forever. It's been tested and tried. And there's two. And three more. And there's three. This recipe is very forgiving. So we have three uh, cups of flour. And we can set that over to the side. Now I'm going to drizzle in just a tiny bit of EBOO. And that's mainly for uh, just a little bit of extra flavor because it keeps our, um, our bread nice and moist. There we go. So let me see. Michelle said, uh, oh, a new grandson, Ronan. Okay, let me get my glasses on. Where's my glasses? I have lost the glasses. What's up with that? Now, you all know I used to have five pairs of glasses sitting around here. Hold on. Got to get the glasses. Okay. Got the glasses. And uh, his name is Ronan. He's from, oh, the distance is hard. 
Oh, I know. So he has a big brother and sister. That's wonderful. Okay, so their other grandmother, who's in North Carolina, is uh, with the other two. So uh, Michelle's going to be going out to see the uh, see the new baby soon. Oh, that's going to be wonderful, Michelle. I know you're looking forward to that. You know, I don't know what I would do. I'm so fortunate to have uh, my children in close proximity. And so because of that, it just makes it so much easier when we have an event like that. We can certainly uh, go be at the hospital, the works, which is always a lot of fun. Now, so what I'm doing is that I am working on the dough, and I'm taking my wooden spoon, and I was so busy talking, I should use the handle but I used um, the main part of the paddle, and that's okay. We're just gonna let that uh, get together, and it's coming together. It's gonna be rather shaggy at the beginning. And what I like to do, even though we really don't have to knead it, because I'm gonna give it time to rise, uh, I like to go in and just make sure that there's no nothing dry just sitting around, everything's there the way it's supposed to be. Oh, it feels wonderful. It's nice and warm, and uh, this is so nice. So we're going to let all of this come together. And so I'm just going to put that there, and uh, I'm going to rinse my hands, and then we'll put some plastic wrap over the top. There we go. Babies, babies, babies. We love those grandbabies. Oh my goodness. You know, I am a nut over my grandbabies. Okay, we've got plastic wrap. I'm just gonna put some plastic wrap over this and I'm gonna let it go until it rises to at least doubles in height in this container. So there we go. Got that going. But I'm not going to leave you hanging. So I did a second one. So we'll be able to at least get it into the oven and probably even finish it. So there we go. That's the process. Now, this is going to go over in a nice place so it can do its little sleeping. And then we'll be ready to go. Now, I've got, I'm going to wipe off any flour, even though we're going to need a little bit, but I've got some parchment paper there, and I'm going to put you where you can see a little better. All right, let's get you back just a bit. There we go. All right, now we've got our... Uh, there's a plastic wrap because we probably need it for just, just a few minutes. And the oven has been heating and it is on 400. 400. We're going to let it cook. And uh, I've got my yeast. I've got that closed up. I don't want anything to happen with that. Here's our sugar. I need to put the top back on that. Now, I'm going to work here and uh, we're going to get this ready. Now, I did this last night. So I'm taking off the plastic wrap as well as a warm towel. So I'm going to take this warm towel and put it over the one we had uh, that we just fixed. So all of that can stay nice and warm. So I, what I did and what I'm going to do is that I want this to look pretty. So I'm going to take my a little bit of... Uh, oatmeal. I'm going to take about a handful of oatmeal and sprinkle over it. And uh, we're going to have a very nice, let me get my bench scraper. There we go. Because that will help it to come out quickly. I'm going to put a little oatmeal here on the, on the counter. 
as well. So I've got oatmeal here, and I've got oatmeal over the top. So we're going to bring all this together. Degas de de it. And I have everybody, all the little oatmeal families, they're in there. They're going in. That's going to be out of the way. We're going to have oatmeal clean up really big in a little while. Okay, so what we're going to do is that we're going to fold it up, and it's picking up that oatmeal. But it's moist enough that at this point, it's not sticking at all, which I really like. So it's a nice, moist dough. So there we go. I'm just running it around so it can pick up everything. Put that all together. Not really sticking to my hands. I'm going to add just a little more. And it's going to be so pretty when it uh, comes out of the, the oven. So we're going to knead just a little bit. Now that we've got that oatmeal in there, we're working that oatmeal in. It's going to be a pretty loaf of bread. That's the hope. That's the hope. You know, bread has its own agenda. <laughs> it is a, when it comes to yeast, it's a living thing. And uh, some days it's happy and it does everything you want it to do. And other days, it, it may decide, oh, I'm not working so well today. It just depends on your temperature, depends on the moisture in your uh, house, sometimes depends on you. It is just, it's bread's interesting. Okay, so this feels wonderful. And uh, so I am going to put this on parchment. My pan is in the oven. And you know, a lot of times I will uh, cut some little parts in it. So I think I'm going to do that today. One, two, give that gas a place to go. And uh, now we're going to sprinkle a little flour on it because we want it to be pretty. Put some in our hand. That way we can do a nice cover. We want it to brown well. And we're going to cook it for about in this 400 degree oven. We're going to cook this about, oh, first 30 minutes with the top on. And then we're going to take the top off and let it cook another at least 15 minutes or so until it gets to the nice brown color that you like. Now, I would say normally that whatever vessel that you're going to place this into that is fairly close to the, to the size of the bread that you want to make. Today, my vessel is a little larger than what I would normally use. So it may be that this may not stay as nice and, and round and fluffy as I would like for it to. It may be a little wider than I want it to be just because the vessel is uh, a little larger. So I'm gonna give this about, oh, about 10 minutes. I'm going to cover it, and I'm just going to take the bowl we have, and I'm going to cover this for about 10 minutes and let it rest. Then we're going to put it into the oven, into the vessel, into the oven, and let it bake. Now, while that's happening, we're going to wash hands, and uh, there's a lot of chit-chatting going on, so I'm bringing you over here, so... Hopefully, I can see. You can see. Look at all that sunlight coming in. Isn't that beautiful? Yesterday was so yucky. 
it was so rainy and and and, and uh, gray all day, and so uh, I uh, I wanted to uh, get some things done. We went to the movies and we just had a good time yesterday doing some things that didn't involve being outside since it was such a tough day. All right. Okay, my, um, I can see that my cabbage is breaking down. And that's a good thing. That's what I wanted to do. I'm gonna give it a little toss so it can continue to break down. I'm gonna give it a few more minutes. And then we're gonna get it into the jar because those of you who are just coming in, we're also making some homemade sauerkraut. And uh, that's gonna take us about three to four days for that to ferment and to get the flavor that you want. So we're gonna work on that as well. Now what I had to do, just so you know, I have a little jar here that's filled with those uh, little beads that you can get at the Dollar Tree. And of course, color has, you know, it doesn't matter what color they are, but they're in here. These are gonna act as our weights. So this is gonna be going on top of the sauerkraut and pressing it down so that the fermentation can take place and uh, the gases can be released. And so this is good. So let's see. Um, Aww. Y'all are so sweet. That's right. You have a lot of those, Jewel. A lot of those little little beads. I do too. You know, I did years ago. I used these, not this color, but I used these to decorate my um uh, table my my table and I put it around the, the plate and uh, they turned out very pretty good morning and um, so these are really inexpensive and you can certainly do that to decorate your your table so we're going to be using this today as a weight so I will make sure that it's recleaned again because I've been handling it before I put it into the jar but the jar has already been washed. And because the sauerkraut is room temperature, the jar is room temperature. And uh, if the sauerkraut was hot, the jar would have to be hot. Now, so we are going to get that hot pot out of the oven. And uh, I'm gonna get it, this bread in. So I'm getting my gloves. I'm going to get my pad, and hopefully I have you turned in such a way that you'll be able to see everything. Okay. Now, so gloves on, because it is very hot. And I'm using my confetti bake today, and I haven't used it for baking ever. So this is our first time. We're going to do it though. We're going to do it together. That oven is nice and hot, so I know it's going to be just fine. Now, I'm going to take the top off. Woo! Hot, hot, hot. And I'm going to sit it over here where it's out of the way. All right. Now, take my, very carefully, take my parchment paper. Notice I'm picking it up with the parchment, and we're going to plop it right in. Here we go. Now, the nice thing, and you don't have to use parchment, but the nice thing about parchment is that it makes it easy getting the bread in and out, especially when you're dealing with something as hot as what we're dealing with. All right, bread in. Top back on. 
30 minutes. 30 minutes. Then we're going to take the top off and let it brown. So finish cooking. All right, so it's in. In the oven. Woo! That's a hot place down there. And uh, let me set my timer because you know I get to talk to you all. And I will forget. Okay, now that's going. Whoo! It really did warm up the kitchen quite a bit. So let's get you over here so we can work on the other part of what we're doing today. Now, you know, in the kitchen on Saturday morning, we're also preparing um, a dish either for today or one for the week. And today I was going through our menu list and I had written down that we were gonna have some red beans and rice. And uh, so that's what we're fixing today, the red beans and rice. We, it may be that we, the big guy and I may eat them tonight, and it may be that I may actually put them into the refrigerator because you know they're better the second day than the first day. So I've got, um, I'm using chicken fat in the bottom of this pan. So I'm going to let that get hot. That's pretty hot. I'm going to get it nice and hot. And I'm using my cast iron for this. And uh, you all are going to laugh. Look at this. Can you tell? See that bubble? That's where I soaked my beans. And uh, I thought, okay, I soaked them a little early. And I thought, well, I can put them into the refrigerator. And that'll be fine. And as you can see, I have ruined the top. Because I don't know if it will snap back to normal. Well, yes, it did. How about that? And uh, so we're going to be putting the red beans. We're going to be using those in a little while. But the first thing we need to do is to get the skillet nice and hot. And you know, our red beans and rice needs aromatics. So we're going to be using onions and celery in this mix. So I've got that going. And uh, I have some homemade chicken broth that we're going to add in. And uh, at Michelle's suggestion last week, I ordered some of Miss Mickey's Super Creole. So I'm going to be working with that today. We're going to put that in and see what it does because I haven't cooked with it. And um, so today's going to be the day that we're going to try this out. So I, I think just from kind of taking a little pinch out and tasting it, it tastes pretty good. So we're going to see what we can do right here. I have rice that I've already cooked because we're going to have to taste this before we get out of there. Now, what I'm going to do is to get a clean spurtle. Clean spurtle. And I'm going to give my sauerkraut a little bit of a flip because I want it to get it to break down. It's gonna, you'll, you'll tell when it breaks down because it's going to reduce by almost half its mass. This was piled up on top of this container and it is just about reduced halfway. Okay, so we've got chicken fat that's going there and um, I'm going to add in one whole onion. So we're going to put that in. One whole onion. And I'm going to get a spoon, a smaller spurtle, and we're going to move that around in the pan. Now, the advantage, you know, you could have used uh, just regular olive oil. You could have used uh, bacon, drippings. You could have used any of that in this, in this mixture. But I've got chicken fat, and I actually have... A little bit more, and I think I'm going to need that. I'm looking, this is pretty dry, but I just threw in what I already had. So, this is right over the top of my, my broth that I made. 
So I'm just skimming it off and putting it in. Don't waste it because that is gold right there. That, that fat off of that chicken, it's going to be so good. Now, we need a little seasoning, and I'm going to add some of Ms. Mickey in here. I'm going to put in, I'm going to start with a teaspoon. And I'm pretty sure we'll need a little more, but you know, you start small and work your way up. Now, you know what? I think I better put the top back on this and give it a good shake because it's got a lot of different seasonings in there. Okay. All right. I'm doing a heaping teaspoon because I know we got a lot to go in. And you know, beans have no flavor whatsoever. So we've got our, oh, that smells wonderful. Now, I don't know at this point how much kick this has. Now, I got chopping happy this morning and I had, uh, okay, uh, I'm gonna use about half of this at this moment, we're gonna look at it and see how that goes. Um, and I may have some celery left over that I can use in a salad. So, you know, I'm on salad a day is so good for you. So we've got, we've got onions and we are allowing this to cook in our fat, whatever type of fat that you decide. You could have just used butter. You could have used, uh, like I said, bacon grease. Or you could have used EVO. Oh, all right. So I'm going. I'm not going to add any additional celery at this point. But I am going to let this cook down just a little bit. Now I already know I have way too many red beans because what I did was to uh, go ahead and soak the entire pound of red beans. So we're going to let this cook. And uh, let all of this get happy in there. I think I'm going to add a little black pepper. And the big guy's been over here, so my uh, pepper got moved a little bit. I'm just going to shake a little bit in. That was about a half teaspoon of black pepper. And, you know, if you like more heat, once you start to cook this down, then just pick up a little bit of the celery or the onion. I'm going to make sure I get all this seasoning in there. And uh, I'm going to grab a piece of celery. Um. To see what I need. Now, it's not hot but it has lots of flavor. So I'm gonna add one more teaspoon. One more teaspoon of the, of the Mrs. Mickey spice. Okay. Oh yeah. And because I know the big guy well, I'm going to put in a pinch of red pepper flakes. Add a little pepperoncino in there. And I'm going to, going to rub it and break it up. That's going to give it just a little kick. I'm not going to put any hot sauce or any of that in it. Um, I'll let him do that on his own. So there's our vegetables well cooked. And we're going to add our beans. I'm going to start with about half of this container of beans and see what that looks like. Because I can certainly use these beans. I can freeze them at this point or I can use them in something else. Now, for those of you who are vegetarian, you can let, you know, put it, we're going to put the some broth in. You can use all vegetable broth, 
do it with EVOO and um, use all vegetable. But what I'm going to do is that I'm going to bring out some sausage that I am going to um, cook on the side and then throw it in. Okay. So let me get my little skillet here. We're going to put some uh, sausage together. And I'm going to use, hope you can hear me over the clanking, but I'm going to use some Italian sausage. And since I'm going to put it in already cooked, what I'm going to do at this point is to add just a little bit, about a cup or so of chicken broth, because you know, beans need liquid. They need liquid, so I'm gonna turn this up because I want this to boil. Oh yeah. All right, now I'm actually gonna put the top on it over here. Okay, now we've got our seasonings in. We used our Liz Mickey's Super Creole seasoning. And it is good. I got it on Amazon, and I do believe I may even have it down in the description box. If not, look for Ms. Mickey's Spices. Ms. like MS, Mickey's. Now, let me get that sausage. Here we go. Now, we got our sausage. Put you here so we can work. All right, now let's. Um, I'm going to actually take the the jacket off of our. I'm going to take the jackets off of these and by running the knife down the sausage, down the link, and then just peeling the jacket off. You just peel that little covering off, peel it off. So we're gonna do that, and I'm gonna kind of break it up as I put it into the pan. There we go. Okay, I'm going to do that for all six. And for those of you who uh, may not want any type of real meat and you're just doing a more vegetarian, you can purchase the vegetarian crumbles. And uh, they have sausage, imitation sausage. It's just seasoned soybeans. And... Uh, but you'll have a chance to have that flavor. Anyway, we're going to take all of these apart. I have five. So turn that down. These are popping. Okay. Just light that up. There we go. What are you ladies doing today? It's a nice day for most of us. Maybe raining in your area. I know some rain's coming. I think we're supposed to get rain tomorrow. And uh, so some of you may be experiencing some rain today. Some people had snow this week. And uh, I think they probably snowed up toward uh, Michelle's area. It looks like... Uh, I kind of keep an eye on all areas. I'm kind of used to that. You know, I taught weather for years with the kids. And uh, so I'm still a weather nut. I keep up with the weather all the time. We started weather and uh, just kept up with what the forecast was from day to day. All right, that's five links of our Italian sausage. I didn't buy hot. I just got the regular because I figured I could add more spice 
into the red beans and rice. So I'm going to throw this away and wash my hands. So come on here with me while that is working. We're up here at the sink. And yes, bright light. This is where the sunshine is. So we let that sunshine get happy. I love the sunshine. So I'm good with that. All right. Get the hand, the meat juice off of the hand. So get the hands very clean. Warm water. And I'm some of the cutting them go down the drain as well. So I'm going to run this every second. And uh, you know, we have to multitask. You can see the meat can be done. And we have to get on it. I'm going to use my towel, my clean towel. Let's see if I can find our. Yeah. You got it? Our little device to uh, for me to chop that up. I'm going to hold on to this because I don't want to go anywhere. And you just take it and press. That helps to break your meat up as you're cooking. And we want this to maybe brown just slightly. Main thing is we want it to be done before we put it into the beans. And the beans are working. We've got about 13 minutes until our timer goes off for the bread. So we're not going to touch that. And uh, for those of you who are just coming in, we can we have a loaf of bread that's in the oven. We have some sauerkraut we're going to work on. All right. Cabbage, anyway. It's not sauerkraut yet. Hello, hello. Those of you who are coming in, good to have you. And uh, there we go. We've got that Italian sausage going. Okay. So I'll just go over there and put my knife up. So I'm going to turn you back this way because we're going to try to get that um, get our, it's amazing how this um, cabbage will break down. And that's what we're letting do. We're letting it break down. We're getting it now. It's had about 30 minutes to break down well. I'm just tossing it around. Now, what we are going to do is that we're going to take our jar, and since I have clean hands, I'm going to use my clean hand, and I'm going to press this. Oh, you know what? Let me use my, see if I can get it in easier. I'll use my canning funnel and see if we can get it into that jar without making a total mess. There we go. So I'm going to use my canning funnel. And we're going to take this fertile and kind of push it through. Uh, at least that's my thought. Let's see if that works. Yes, that's working. Yeah. This takes a little energy and a little patience. And, uh, you know, sometimes we don't always have all the patience that we need. So, use our fertile. And push it down. And we want it down in there tight. So this is really, we're going to kind of overfill it. And uh, because we know it's going to break down as it permits. And I'm going to go in and do some more pressing on it. I have the bottle of weight ready. Okay. Just gonna get a little more in there. Try another handful or two. And in the bottom of this bowl, there's lots of liquid that came off of this uh, cabbage. And there we go. We're pressing that in. So 
So I get all of this again. There we go. Now, from one for me. And I'm pushing on it. I mean, I am really pressing hard. Okay. Now, one more time. You turn this down. I don't want that to burn up while we're talking. Hold on a sec. You get this rinsed off again. It has been clean, and I, uh, but I have been handling it. Okay, so we have our jar, we have our waste that I'm going to put on top of it, and I'm going to sit it there and press because the weight is going to help to continue to apply pressure to our container. Now, I'm going to take a couple of paper towels, fold it in fourth, and I'm going to put this over our container. Now, what I need at this point is a rubber band, but you know, I don't have a rubber band right now, but I'm going to get one, so hold on. And if I don't find that, I'm going to use a zip tie. Okay, got a zip tie. That's the quickest thing I can find. And we're going to zip this. You know, there, where there's a will, there's a way. Remember that? Where there's a will, there's a way. All right, our beans are bubbling. That's good. I'll work this around. And fasten it. Put it around the rim of the jar. And you know what? Of course, it's not quite long enough. Let me get a longer one. I think I have one. Okay, well, I thought I had one. It is longer. That's the jar. I'm going to press it down. I may have to just wait and get a rubber band. I think that's what it's going to have to do. I need a rubber band. So this is going to sit for a moment until we can get a rubber band. And then once it is pressed deeply enough, I can actually just sit the top on it. And I had thought about doing that, putting the lid on it like this and uh, just letting it stay there. And I think the band might stay. So we're going to try that until I get to the until I get to the rubber band, but we're gonna rubber band it, just for safety's sake. All right, so our crowd is under underway, and we're gonna turn it back around so we can pay attention to what's going on over here on the stove because we've got a lot of bubbling going on. Okay, our meat is just about ready. Our beans are bubbling away. Our bread has about six minutes and 49 seconds, and uh, we are just cooking this down. Now we know, now mine is a little soupier. You may actually uh, like to, like your red beans a little bit thicker, and if you do, then you know, just don't add as much liquid as I did. But my big guy likes soupy. So that's why we got soupy. All right, so I'm gonna let this continue to work because those beans need to cook. But while I'm over here, I'm gonna play with this meat. Make sure that it's done. Most of it, I can tell that the pink is gone. That's the main thing, we want the pink to be gone before we put it into the mixture. Oh, good. Now, when I empty this into the beans, I'm not going to drain anything. All of this goodness is going to go in there. All right, we're good to go. We can turn that off. We're 
trying to multi Ooh! lost him. He ran away. I'm gonna have to get him out of there. Two little pieces. Ah! Can't waste that. Mmm. Mmm. Hot but good. All right. Here's your meat. We're gonna put it into our our beans. Bring you over. Our beans are bubbling here. We're gonna sprinkle that in. Getting everything out of there. All the juice. <coughs> I've got a spurtle. Get all of this a nice stir. Now this is one of those dishes that we're gonna have to let simmer until the beans are at the tenderness that you like them. Now I had some beans overboard, so I'm just letting you know. And that's okay, they do that. But the flavor of that sausage, and remember we used, I used chicken grease, so all of that is going to flavor these beans. So it, they're gonna need I'd say about an hour to bubble here. So we probably won't get to taste it. We'll only get to taste the, the juice, but we're gonna let it keep going for a while anyway. All right, so top on, because I wanna keep my juice. If you don't wanna keep the juice, then you can leave the top off. But I'm gonna keep as much of that juice as I possibly can, because I already know the big guy wants the juice. Huh. It is easy, Sue. It is easy. I, you know, I, I love cooking, but one thing we want to know, we want to make sure that our home cooks, young and old, know we can fix anything we want. And we can do it in a way that is simple and uh, it's just a matter of having things prepped. And uh, that's what we've done today. We have things prepped. So that's allowed us to um, get quite a few things done today. And that's the fun thing about Saturday morning is that cook now. So later on, we won't need to. Now, you all laugh. I cleaned this stove yesterday. I mean, I cleaned it. And uh, I... Uh, just lost a bean and he is not wanting to come out come out of there he's gotten stuck there we go he finally popped out so we're going to let that work the rice is here ready so whenever it comes out it's good to go now we have just a matter of two minutes i think we can go ahead and take the bread out so we can at least get a look at it because it's going to need about 15 more minutes, maybe 20, to get to the nice golden brown bread that we all like. So let's go down here, Woo, back in that hot oven. Oh, I can smell the bread, it smells wonderful. Uh, all right, I'll sit there there. I'll sit back there because you want me to stay in there. I have to put it in. All right, got the top. Okay, it definitely needs to brown. But we'll bring you over so you can see where it is at this point. And uh, you can see it needs to brown, but it's starting, still needs to finish up cooking. But it's going to be a pretty nice round loaf of bread. So this is going to go back in the oven without a top and we're going to let it cook, uh, let it bake for probably about, I'm going to say 20 more minutes and um, then take it out. Okay. Let me take it back over here. Get you going. All right. So no top. Get our bread back in that 400 degree oven. I 
Okay, she's in. Woo! And I'm going to put this on 20 minutes. Oops. All right, on the timer. 20, and start the timer. So I can check it before that, but um, this is going to need about 20 more minutes to be perfect. Oh, I appreciate that, Michelle. I know you'd like to cook just like I like to cook. And uh, so what are you fixing good? I know you're fixing something good. And especially it's Saturday. And, you know, guys, as much as we can get done on Saturday, um, I try to do mo a lot of my cooking on Saturday morning between now and 12 o'clock. And uh, then that frees me up or at least do the prep work for whatever it is that I'm going to fix during the week. Now, don't laugh. This is not a part of Leah's recipe, but I have a philosophy. When I'm preparing beans, I need a squish of ketchup. So I'm going to go get the ketchup, and these beans are going to get a squish because they need a little, hmm. Mm. And we are going to give these beans a good squish of ketchup. One big squish. That's all they need. And that's just going to add a little bit of um, the brown sugar that's in the, in the ketchup, the molasses, all of that, that molasses flavor. It's just going to add to our beans. Now, I'm going to sit this off to the side and get a spoon to see if we need to add anything. Oh, yum. And you know what? That Ms. Mickey's. Mmm, it's good. It's good. And that little pinch of red pepper was just enough to add a slight bit of, uh, of kick. But, I mean, we're talking Creole here. So we want a lot of flavor. And, yes, we want just a slight bit of kick. Now, if you're one who you know your family can handle the fire, you can certainly... Um, kick that up a notch. All right, we've got that going. And uh, this is going to be so good. So let me bring you down so you can see what we're doing. There's our pan. It's just bubbling away. It's going to be so delicious. We, so we've been pretty busy this morning. We had our red beans and rice. We put our sauerkraut together. So we've got that. I'm going to sit it over here on the counter. And we've got a loaf of bread in the oven. Woo -wee! That's a good start to the, to the weekend. Isn't that good? Oh, my goodness. So... I'm excited. And you know, I just hadn't realized how quickly this time goes by. So I'm going to put the top back on these beans. I'm going to put them on simmer so they can simmer and get nice and soft and delicious. And either, I think what I do is actually have them for Monday rather than um, today because I know all those flavors are going to go through it, they're going to intensify. They're going to be good. Now, I hope you will try some of these recipes. You know, we've got St. Patrick's coming. This is a good week that if you're preparing any type of corned beef dish, like corned beef hash, corned beef and potatoes, save some of that corned beef. 
and use the sauerkraut because with by I'm going to give it a see today Saturday Sunday Monday by Tuesday give your sauerkraut a taste and it should be ready to be able to put on your corned beef sandwich your Reuben sandwich and be absolutely delicious it's gonna be so good so i've got a lot of cleaning up to do we're gonna get all that done uh oh let's see tutu tutu loves mini is making uh taco soup using sausage red and black beans tomatoes some rotel oh yummy 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 and uh some frozen corn chinese cabbage and for added for the greens. I, okay, I'm good with that. Um, we call it magic soup because you always lose weight when you eat it. Hey, I like that. I like the sound of that. You all need to copy that recipe down because uh, that sounds amazing. I think it'll be so good. And uh, thank you, Sue. I certainly appreciate that. Please be sure to leave a, a thumbs up. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe, I hope, because we do these kinds of things all the time. So, ladies, gentlemen, we are going to, um, I've got a little short that's going to be coming up on Tuesday and Thursday, so be looking for those. And got some things that have been done in the kitchen that you're going to want to see that's going to come up on Wednesday. So, uh, We've got a full week. And one more thing. Next Friday evening, 6.30, um, Denise and I are going to be on with uh, Florence McDonald. Florence McDonald was one of the guests that we've had on uh, on lunchtime. And uh, she's we're going to be on her show. And uh, talking about the home front, getting it ready for spring and summer, and just talking about in general types of things it's going to be a great time so be on the lookout you won't want to miss it so full week mwah, 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 mwah. have a good time my friends and family and uh, enjoy your weekend and i pray that you stay safe and have a blessed time so i'll see you soon right here in the kitchen of ebony ivy and time